Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to Bible Study Episode 48. Today we're going to be diving into John chapter 20, verses 24 through 29. We're going to be talking about Jesus appearing to Thomas. Today we have Brother Nate to have the Bible study discussion with us. To begin, we're going to start off with a prayer by me. Today we're going to be led by Brother Nate. We're going to end off with a prayer by Brother Nate. If you guys can, please bow your heads and close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, God. We thank you for this day that you have made. I rejoice in the God, God. I pray that now we came together as brothers, God, to iron to be able to sharpen iron, God. We pray that we'll be able to read your word, understand your word, and get a comprehension of your word, God. We pray that you'll be able to speak through us through this Bible study, God. We pray that iron will be able to sharpen iron, God. We pray that the viewers will be able to understand your word, God. We pray that we continue to be consistent each and every single week with these Bible study videos, God, to continue to pour into the word, continue to educate the world on your word, God. We praise you, we love you, and we thank you, God. In Jesus' in your holy name, amen. Now, guys, we'll be going into the word for today, being led by Brother Nate. All right, all right. So I'm reading today, um, John 20, verse 24 to 29. I'm going to read from this version today. So this, this reading, blessed me, home and Christian um, study Bible. I'll read this one. One of the 12, Thomas, called twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples kept telling him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, if I don't see the mark of the nails in his hand, put my finger to the mark of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will never believe. After eight days, his disciples were indoor again when Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and observe my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Don't be an unbeliever, but a believer. Thomas responded to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. Those who believe without seeing are the ones blessed. So far the reading. Question for you, as you read this text, what's something that stood out to you? What's the first thing that kind of stood out to you in your mind? Once I read it, um, the point I point out the most to me was the part where Thomas said that I'll believe when I see it. That point out to me because now we can't see Jesus physically. Back then, they had the opportunity to see him. And in the scripture, Jesus said, Bless, blessed those who believe without seeing. And I think that's a very important scripture with now because we can't see Jesus physically. So we got to go based off of um, faith. And with based off of faith and living the right lifestyle, we'll see Jesus and God one, one day. So that's, that's what we'll point out. The uh, um, most to me. Okay, great. That so far, the reading so far, the insight, excellent. You know, when we come on, just try to connect the dot, cross the bridge, see what was going on in the text, and bring it into real life and to bring it into real time the best we can in our discussions. And uh, one of the things that just just uh, blew my mind was just that um, it was Thomas's position. Um, we actually see. I think this would say the first time post resurrection is seen a case of even though it's happened, unbelief. You know. Um, Thomas was always an interesting disciple because you, you got to go back to John 14 to the last time you saw um, Thomas and Thomas was saying how are we going to know the way how are we going to know the way to God and that's when Jesus reveals an important revelation about himself I am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the father but by me Thomas um, in my reading I love that after Thomas acts or Thomas experiences or processes what he's processing in his mind, that revelation comes after. Um, even with this instance, you know, when I grew up reading this text or hearing this story, you heard about the doubt so much of Thomas and Thomas was a disciple. Where was, why was he struggling to believe? But you can easily cross the bridge to us today and say more than we've ever expected. God has been so good and done some amazing things. And even after some of the amazing things we've seen God do in our life, when we had a low place, which is what Thomas was in. Thomas was still in a low place, I believe, emotionally, because I think he, he this, maybe I read, read too much into it, but I feel like um, he was still expecting uh, the, what they would talk about in Acts chapter one, he was storing Israel's power of balance. And then we'll get to Acts. It was storing the dominance Israel had, restoring the political dominance or the political reign the political influence and maybe he, he wagered in that and see that he died that put a selling that put a selling death to that you know um but for me thomas reminds us of, of us sometimes because sometimes 
we don't go through the process of faith. Um, what I mean by that is believing when we don't see the result, trusting when we don't see the result. And that's what he was going through. You know, that's what's made, that's what made Thomas said what he said to his own brothers. He said, another version said, except I see his hands and the print of his nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand inside, I will not believe. The difference between saying if I shall see him versus unless I see him is the wrestling, the conflict of unbelief. Words matter. Um, I, I feel like in the past couple of years, we've been coming, I'm, I'm listening and paying attention to words and lyrics a little bit more, you know, because that's the direction that the sentence goes. <laughs> so unless, if he said, I shall see him, and I'm reading it again, I'm, I'm even with this version, he said, he said, put it like this, if I don't see, I'm not going to believe. I don't see the mark of the nails in his hands. Put my finger, I have to do the work, I have to see, I need the evidence, because y'all could be lying to me. But these were his brothers. They did life together for the past few years. And they're telling you, it's, it's kind of like when somebody has an issue in life or you're trying to do an intervention for somebody else. And somebody says, fam, you got to fix this. Everybody, it's kind of like that, you know? And, and it's just like, what is it going to take for us to show you? You know, Jesus shows up like about eight days after he said what he said, like a week, the last week, you know? Literally. <laughs> what still blows my mind is that he, he appeared to them. He didn't enter the doorway. I feel like Thomas is that would have probably died if he just entered, if he knocked on the door and said, yo, I'm here. This man just appeared to them <laughs> like a ghost, but he wasn't a ghost. That's another mystery for another time. <laughs> you know, he was, he was real, but how he did it, the amazing thing about the glorified Jesus, I want you to look at this. I want, I would encourage you to reread John again and see what, see what, what John was writing about, that this man was fully human, but he was fully God. And he never failed to address the humanity of, 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 of the, the, the humanness of our thought, or the fickleness even of our thought process. But look at how look at how Jesus addressed Thomas, you know? He let him, he, he let him, he let him do the experiment. Like, he let this man do the experiment. So it's like, do you see this? I want to ask you this. Do you see that idea in your generation, that belief, that thought process? I got to really, if I don't see it, I'm not going to believe it. If I don't see a miracle, if I don't see something that happened great in church, I don't know if I believe. Like, have you seen that element still? You see how the element kind of once you connect with the dots. But yes, I no do problem. see. I do see that I ideology in my generation. We have to see. We have to see proof in order to believe. Like, where's the proof? I, I need. I need the evidence. Not only in a spiritual aspect, but in a life Ooh. aspect. I need to see. I need to see progress. I need to see something in order for me to continue to do what I got to do in order for me to continue to believe in order for me to continue to work and put my energy towards mm -hmm. it. I got to mm -hmm. physically mm -hmm. um, see it or touch it. Mm -hmm. Did you know, did you know, as you said that, that unbelief, the consequence of unbelief is just to not see the fullness of God. If you go all the way back to the Old Testament, though the generation of, of the children of Israel that didn't enter the promised land, it wasn't, it was, it was about their unbelief. They didn't believe God. They didn't believe God for what he said he would do. Even after he showed, you see how, like, it's crazy. You can connect the dots throughout the Testaments. Unbelief will really rob you of the joy of faith. Take that with you. Unbelief will rob you of the joy of the journey of having faith. Because if you read this, and then you read John 11, and, and, and not John 11, on Hebrews chapter 11, just hearing the progress and the journey of faith. What does the journey of faith look like? As written in the scriptures, it's us believing. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. If, <laughs> if we really dissect that, and that's another conversation for another day, because faith is one of the hot topics in the body. After all these years, faith, believing God, believing God for what he said, being resolute in his sovereignty, believing that he has the best interest for us, even when we don't see it. Um, that's another issue for another time. But looking at what Thomas was going through, you know, Thomas, I loved his, I loved his curiosity. That's one positive aspect I'll take from Thomas's story. It was, there's curiosity because he had to really see for himself. Like, listen, I walked with him. I talked with him. But you got to remember, he didn't know the way <laughs> to, to God. And Jesus had to rebuke him. Basically, he was telling the disciples, have you been with me so long? Back in John 14, that you don't know that it's me. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. If you're going to come to God, you've got to come through me. The manifestation of that is right in front of you. I hung myself on the cross. I died. I died a physical death because some people feel like he only died spiritually. But then there's also another train of thought of people that believe he only resurrected spiritually. But he his body got up. I think that marriage of believing everything he set out, the God mission that he was on, and to fulfill that and say, Thomas, touch. Because think about it. If, he, if Jesus was a ghost, are you really feeling the pain in his hand? Are you feeling his side and feeling 
the piercing if he was a ghost? No, no, because we in our mind, ghosts are celestial beings. They, they ain't got no, they ain't got no flesh. You feel know I me? Mean? They ain't got no flesh. Another thing to dissect from another time, but this is something that stood out to me, you know. Um, there's something on the other side of that that Jesus does that I appreciate, that I really respect. I want to see if you see it. Look at what Jesus allowed Thomas to do. He allowed him to touch him. Yeah, he allowed him to um, touch him and like the womb. Mm -hmm. Let me flip the other side of the coin. Let me flip to Jesus' side, man. This is, a, this is the part that moved me. This is what transparency looks like in the kingdom. Letting, letting people that need to see touch the wounds, touch the piercing if they need to. Get connected, you know? Get connected to the story. It's just like... <laughs> Yeah. Think about it. He let him in. He he really let him in. I don't mean to cut you off, but I was gonna say mm -hmm. I compare this to like in the body where the leaders let others see like, okay, I went through this or I'm going through this and being vulnerable with people, being fully on transparent. Like, see right here, these are my wounds. Then they haven't healed yet, but by the mm -hmm. grace of God, they will be healed. I'm working on them. I'm taking the necessary precautions and things that I need to do. If I got to rub some rubber alcohol every day and put a bandage on it, if I got to mm -hmm. rub a cloth, if I got to um get into the word, if I got to pray, give him fully transparent, saying, this is my wounds, my wound, mm -hmm. <laughs> my wound, and it's healing. For me, it's very important for leaders to, to reveal their wounds because Mm -hmm. Other than that, we just think that you just perfect and nothing happens to you. Like, and I think I had that perspective at a young age because mm -hmm. not too many people talked about what they went through or what they're going through. So it's like, I, I used to think, I used to think anybody like, yeah, I just got chill love because ain't nobody mm -hmm. mentioning no struggle, no heartache, none of that. So I used to just think like, well, yeah, I like looking good. <laughs> And with my channel, I make sure I do that. I be I be fully transparent. I talk about stuff I go through or I went through. And I reveal the wounds and talk to you. I'll either heal the wound mm -hmm. with God's help or how the wound is being held right now, being healed right now. Mm -hmm. We talked about this when we did our conversation in post-quarantine. There's a difference between transparency and translucency. And I think in the text, you kind of actually see a little degree of this. Because this is Jesus in a 12. This is the 12. This is not, he did this among a crowd. You feel what I'm saying? I feel if he did that among the crowd, some people would believe or some people would have been like, nah, this really ain't Jesus. This might be somebody's twin or something like that. This might be one of his younger brothers playing a prank on him. You, know, you, know, you don't know what goes through people's minds. But he was amongst inner circle. His inner 12, the 12, or the 11, rather, the 11 at this point, because Judas has already taken his own life. Um, among the 11, and um, pretty much he's saying, fam, this is what it is. This is why God told me to choose y'all. <laughs> you have to believe this because you have to carry this message. So if you don't even believe in the last paragraph, the concluding paragraph that I actually died and got up, this message is going to be hampered. That's another way to look at it, you know? But I do go back to that point that you're talking about, the transparency of Jesus. Jesus showed that there's ministry, uh, and take this with you, there's ministry in the wound. There's ministry in the wounds, meaning your story, where you might have failed, where you might have struggled. I, I also think about this, telling y'all about it with, with my mental health journey, something I was listening to a webinar when I was also doing a uh, nurse cycling program and something I was talking about was the Kintsugi method. Um, if you ever look it up, Kintsugi, look it up on Google, look at a Kintsugi um, vessel. It's a cracked vessel that's been mended with gold and platinum. And I look at that almost like with how we are to not, through Jesus Christ, this is, I'm, I'm, and I'm reaching way back in the archives, in the kingdom archives. I read a book as a teenager. I know, so weird. I, I, I've lived such an interesting life, <laughs> getting safe from a young age. I read a book from Bishop T.D. Jakes called um, Naked and Not Ashamed. I was around your age, I think it's 16, 17. I was around your age when I read that book. And that book was already out for a minute, but I read that book. And um, Bishop Jakes was talking about getting back to that, basically summing up, getting back to a place like that where we are not ashamed of our wounds, not ashamed of our story because of Jesus Christ, uh, who's redeemed our life and redeemed our story. Good book to get into. I got to reread it again. But that was something I remember I took note of and I wrote that because Jesus deals with our wounds. We don't have to tell the story of our wounds from the place of defeat or loss. We can tell it from a place of victory. We can tell we can tell the story, but from a different perspective. Jesus, is, Jesus allows Thomas to experience him from a different perspective. And I think that's what makes verse 29 a rebuke in the first part, because you've seen, but I believe it, but also the way into the kingdom. But those who believe without seeing are blessed. The New King James, I think, said, blessed are they 
who have not seen me but believe. Because look at all these years later, there's still people coming to Christ. There's people, even throughout this, the heart of this pandemic, there's people who was seeking Jesus and, and, and pursuing a relationship with Jesus Christ under shame. There are people who once followed Jesus that are being called back home and following Jesus again, which is such a beautiful thing. They weren't there in the room when he showed Thomas what he showed him, but they believe. The end of chapter 20 basically summarizes it. That's the point of the gospel. If you believe in Jesus, <laughs> you know, and, and I like what John said, I know I'm going ahead of us, I'm going ahead of us. So he's saying basically in verse 30, he was saying, he did a lot of other signs and miracles in the presence of the disciples that I, he didn't write down. But the point of the writing of the book was that you can believe, believe that Jesus is the Messiah, not Jesus was, that Jesus is the Messiah. So this is about us believing. Believe, we're not going to really experience the fullness of God's kingdom. So we have to check our belief system, evaluate our belief system, and trust, trust Jesus' wounds. Because you know what's crazy? I saw an image that they used to have in a Catholic church, and, I, and I, it kind of spoke to me recently. That they showed a picture of the resurrected Jesus with his hands out, and there was a wound. It was oh, this AME church. You still see the wounds, but it's not like deep. And what spoke to me about I seen a couple weeks ago, it's not the AME church I was passing through. That in the wounds, he's saying, Come to me because I've been there. Come to me if you're laboring. Come to me if you're tired. I'll give you rest. It's on me. The wounds are evidence that it's on me. All you have to do is believe in what I've done and believe that I can save you, believe I can redeem you. And that's the way into the kingdom of God. Believe. So, that was what I took with me. And um, I want to encourage you in your generation, all those that are listening, that, listen, believing in Jesus Christ is the way in, you know? Uh, for those that watch on YouTube in the coming weeks, months, years, simply put, believing in Jesus Christ. Paul talks about it, believe in your heart. You got to believe there first. Then confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. That's the way in. That's the way in. Yep, yep, that's symbolism right there. There has to be a healthy unity between the heart and the mouth. And um, look, Thomas did it. About it. I almost feel like Thomas almost rededicated himself when he said, when he did all of that and said, yo, my Lord and my God. It's like he got a revelation that, oh my gosh, if I didn't believe he was real, it put all end to the doubt. It, I, the doubt is gone. I, I, my fault. <laughs> On me, bro. That's, 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 that's my fault. And um, But that's the way it is. You've got to believe. Any other insights you have before we go into prayer? Lord Jesus, we studied the word. You can see both sides of the coin and apply both sides to your life. Uh, another insight for me is important to ask questions. Jesus and God have the answer to everything. Even if the question is you think it's crazy, or in in the case of the question like um Thomas asked, I say ask question because the transparency, you being real with Jesus, like Jesus, I don't think you probably did that, but like tell me. Like, it's okay to be transparent about situations because you're going to be able to learn and understand mm -hmm. from it. Um, thank God with Thomas, he had the revelation right after um, Jesus answered the question he asked. So he's be able to understand it and really get it uh, for it. And with your leaders and the people that you uh, have around you, be transparent with them. Ask questions. Uh, there's no wrong questions. There's no right question. There's questions. Mm -hmm. And there are answers for questions. So it's okay to ask questions. However, you think that question is yeah. crazy, off the board, off the wall, off the, whatever you think it is, it's important to ask questions. Uh, and the last thing, yeah, believe, yeah. always believe. Like the word said, blessed those who believe but have not seen um, me or whether they have not seen mm -hmm. God or Jesus. I want to see him, but he not he not let me see him. But we continue to have our beliefs, continue to believe in him. Mm. I've been serving the Lord all mm. 17 years of my life. Uh, I don't need to see him to believe in him because I have faith. His faith is a substance, thing hope for and evidence of things not seen. And I I learned and understand that at a young age. So I continue to just um continue to do it, continue to believe in it. So one transparency uh always be transparent uh with your people talk about your wounds don't try to hide nothing because your wounds could be able to help other people your wounds could be able to use as a sermon your wounds could be used as a ministry to continue to, like help people uh two ask questions mm -hmm. no matter how ever the question is it's important to ask questions because you're going to learn and educate yourself and three believe his faith is the substance of thing hold for and evidence of thing not seen. That's a three thing. Yeah. And that's um that's key. 
And I just want to encourage those that are listening today. Um, if your belief has been shattered, um, been challenged, the last 18 to 24 months have done that. And to some degree, I'm not going to lie, like there's days that continue to do that. But don't let your core belief in Jesus Christ wane. There's going to be question. It's going to be rock. It's going to be challenged. There's going to be days where your mind is challenging. You don't know if you have the strength or courage to believe. But I want to encourage you, all you are listening, it's the entryway into the kingdom. And also, believing doesn't mean don't ask questions. Because as I said about Thomas, Thomas asked the question in John 14. I'm going back in there. Curiosity, um, I, I think, is just one of the great ways to revelation. Um, I heard it quoted. I, um, I forgot who quoted it, but it said, revelation is the um, mister of concern. And when there's concern, you ask questions. And when you ask questions, you'll get insight, you'll get revelation. I got to find a quote. I think I've got to find who quoted that. It said, Revelation is the mister of concern. So there's a healthy relationship that seems to be had in between that, too. And um, without the concern, without asking questions, you're never going to see how much Jesus is actually the answer. And we're living in a day where this, on this side of heaven, there are way more questions than answers. But um, if you believe on Jesus Christ and follow him to the best of your ability, follow him with all your heart, when we get to the other side, you're going to realize everything that happened down here was this. It doesn't even matter because I'm looking and I'm in the eternal present to answer. So, um, so that that's amazing. And I want to pray with you, those that are struggling with their belief, those that might be struggling with doubt. It's we're human. But we're going to have moments of doubt. We're going to have moments where we don't believe in ourselves. Sometimes we believe that we're on the right path in life and things aren't happening our way or when things are challenging us. We have to believe what's going on around us. Trust Jesus. So I want to pray with you. And I'm praying that as we had this brief discussion and insight from the scriptures that you hear something, cause you to stir, cause you to read. We don't do this so that you hear our discussion and say, oh, that was great. That was wonderful. But I actually challenge you, everybody that's going to come in, um, read, read the text. Let Jesus speak to you from his wounds. <laughs> let, just, let Jesus speak to you from his wounds. Let him answer just like he did for Thomas. Some of you just might need to be at that place in the presence of God where you just say, you know, Lord, just let me touch the hem of your garment. Let me touch the wound. Every now and again, th that needs to happen. You no, know, you're not a sin if you say, Lord, show me you in your presence. Why? He's present with you. And I want to encourage you. He will be there. Call on the name of the Lord. He will show himself to you. He will reveal himself to you. You call from sincere heart. So let me pray with you. Father, in Jesus' name, I come before you. Um, on behalf of everybody that have listened, will be listening, um, as this is streamed, as this is put out on YouTube, um, I remember this song going up in church. Thank you for bringing it back to me. It said, you know, um, don't be like Doubt and Thomas, but lean upon his promise. And sometimes leaning upon your promise can be so challenging because we're just in an array of so much things. We're surrounded by so much trouble and chaos. And, you know, th th there's such conflict happening on this side of the world. Father, reveal Jesus. Reveal your son to those that might be struggling with their belief. Lord, help us to be like that man that had the son in Mark 9 that was in trouble with demons. And he said all things are possible to them that believe. Lord, help our unbelief. I think that's why you still have us here. Father, help our unbelief. Help our unbelief. Help help the areas where we're striving to believe you and trust you. Show us the wounds in your hand. Show us the side. Show, the, show us you. And you don't hesitate to do it. And we thank you for that. And I'm praying for all the listeners that might have that question in their mind and in their heart. Show us you. Show us the Father. Jesus, reveal yourself in a real way to them. Not some other ideology. Not some other God of the soul, man. Not some other uh, philosophy. But let them see the way the truth, the light, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the anointed one, Jesus, you're the Messiah. And we confess your name on the airways. We confess your name um, in the Zoom and we confess your name on YouTube as this goes out there. We confess your name. And I pray those that might be led to know you and follow you and know you in the pardon of their sins that might not have known you, whether it be Ezra's peers or somebody that's watching on a random hit up on a random search engine. Let that just be such an intentional point uh, that they will believe in their heart and confess with them out that Jesus Christ is Lord. You came, you crucified, died, you rose again, and one day you will come back. And we thank you for the fullness of this story of this God so that um, we may believe and we may be grow. We'll grow rather in our belief in you and grow and trust you and grow and to know you. Do this for my brother Ezra's generation, my generation, and all those that you kept alive and those that need to know you in the part of their sins. Father, thank you for this precious gift of Jesus Christ on this side. And we continue to follow you uh, with grace and follow you the best we can. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, man. Back to you. Amen, amen to that prayer. Thank you so much, Red Nate, for the closing prayer. Uh, thank you so much for that. This is the end of the video, guys. If you haven't already, like, subscribe if you're new, turn on your post notification. We'll be back next week with episode 
49 of Bible study. I'll see you guys till then. Enjoy your upcoming week. I pray for um health. I pray for strength. I pray for guidance. I pray that you'll be protected and always be aware of your surroundings and just continue to to um learn about the Lord and serve him. This is the end of the video, guys. Please like, subscribe. Peace.